Since I last did a portrait editing tutorial in Luminar Neo, there have been a lot of new tools that have been added. So in this video, let's go through all of those tools, take a look at them, I'll show you which ones are really of benefit to our portrait edit and which of those we should probably leave alone. Let's get into it. Before we get into editing this portrait, you'll notice in the background that we have a kind of faint version of the portrait showing up in the background. And that is what Luminar Neo calls the dynamic background. And personally, I really don't like it. I find it distracting and it's also taking your computer resources. So what I would suggest doing is coming over to the little Luminar Neo icon, go to the file section, we're gonna to go to preferences, and we are gonna turn off the dynamic background. Here you can see it's on. We just wanna switch that off. And if I hit okay, we're gonna see that now we just have a neutral gray background. And I prefer working this way so much more because having a neutral background to have our photo on just allows us to judge the colors in our photo much more accurately. So let's double click the photo to open it up. And as I always recommend, just assess your photo to see what needs to be done. As you can see, we've got a few flyaway hairs across her face here. I really should have got her to wipe those out of the way, but never mind, they are there. We need to deal to that. Currently, the photo is lacking a little bit of contrast. I can also see that in her hair here, she actually has beautiful blonde hair, but it's picking up a very green tinge from the reflection of the foliage we've got around. So I'll sort that out as well. And I also find this little dangly fella here just a little bit distracting. So we will take care of that as well. So I'm gonna jump into the edit section. And the first thing I wanna do is just jump into develop raw. That's where we wanna start all of our edits. And you can see that I'm jumping into the profile section here and I am gonna to come to a camera matching profile. And what I would like to do rather than a standard profile that you might normally go for, I'm actually gonna go for the portrait profile. Now I've covered the camera profiles extensively in another video, so I won't go over it here, but if you'd like to see that video, just write profiles in the comments and I'll share that video so you can set this up if you don't see that. If you don't have access to the profiles that you see here, that's okay. You can just use the Luminar default profile for now. It just means that you might need to do a little more color work or boost the contrast a little further, but it's fine. But ideally, you want a camera matching profile because even with no other changes, if I show the before and then release for the after, you can actually see that there is a shift between both the contrast and the colors are getting more accurate once this camera matching profile is applied. I don't feel that I need to do too much with the contrast, but I will increase it just a little bit. Now the highlights, if I bring those down to the left, the reason I want to drop the highlights at this stage is just to keep detail in her hair here. The same with the whites as well. If I bring those down, we're just gonna keep a little bit of detail in the hair rather than blowing that out. So here's our before, here's our after. And the next thing I'd like to do is jump into the curve section because I'd actually like to bring up the brightness value in her skin tone. So skin tones normally reside somewhere around the midpoint on the curve, just slightly higher usually. So what we can do is actually grab a point on the curve just by clicking and starting to bring that up and already you can see that that's a dramatic lift in the brightness in her skin. I probably don't wanna go quite that far. And then just by adding a point that represents the highlights, we can just tweak things a little further and make sure that we're keeping a nice bit of contrast in the file by bringing down the shadow point there. So again, let's check where we've come from by toggling the eye tool and then release to see where we've come to. Okay, I'm happy with that so far. Let's move on into the color section. Now currently the white balance is set as shot. You can see that we do have a lot of green tint going on here, but if I start to move this around, we can make adjustments for that. So we can either warm up the portrait or cool it down. But I was relatively happy with how it was shot in camera. So we can just double click that point to reset it as it was. The thing that I may change though is just bringing up the tint slightly because currently, as I said, we did have more of a green color cast going on. And so I just wanna introduce a bit more magenta to help balance that out. Now, if you've ever wondered the difference between the saturation slider and the vibrant slider, portraits are a really good place to actually see the difference. As I boost the vibrant slider all the way to 100, you can see that the greens, the blues, everything get a lot more saturated. But the skin tone, while it does go up in saturation, it's not nearly as intense as if I grab the saturation slider and bring it up. You can see that literally she's turned into an oompa loompa. That's not what we want, right? So we're gonna double click that to reset it. And instead, if I wanna bring up a little bit more color in the image, 
It's better to use the vibrant slider because it's mindful of the fact that in skin tones we have a lot of oranges and we don't really want to oversaturate them. In terms of sharpness, we want to just zoom in to check and you can see that this image is pretty soft. It's much softer than I would normally like. So what I'm going to do is just increase the sharpness and even bring the radius up a bit too. Do you know what? I don't want to go too far because I don't want to increase sharpness right through the image. It's more her eyes I'm concerned with. And now we've increased the sharpness normally to balance it out a little bit. If you have noise in your image, and you can normally see that better in areas without any texture. So as you increase the sharpness, it's normally a good idea just to balance it out with a little bit of luminosity noise reduction. And within the optics tab, it's normally a good idea to turn on auto distortion corrections. So if you have any barrel or pin cushioning with your lens, it will just fix that. Auto fix chromatic aberration to get rid of any of the fringing. So turn both of those on as well, normally a good idea. So let's do a little before and after just by pressing the backslash key, before and after. We've got a lot more pop and punch in this image and that is what I expect from a raw conversion, a good starting point, a foundational point to build a more creative edit on top of. And that's what we've got so far. Okay, let's close develop raw and we're gonna go past every one of the other tools, as great as a lot of those are, and we're gonna dive straight into the portrait editing section. Of course, we can use other tools within Luminar Neo for working on portraits, but I just wanna focus in this area here. So I am just gonna collapse all of these other editing sections so that we only see the portrait section here. So Studio Light is one of those tools that has been added since I did my last portrait editing video. And if I crank the amount slider up obnoxiously high, um, what we can see is that it's actually creating a lighting effect over our model. And as we move that round, we can literally control that light source. One of the keys to working with this tool is making sure that you don't have the setting up so high that you're overexposing your photo. We have a brightness slider here that can actually work in our benefit by bringing that down and that can darken the background if we do a little before and after. You really can create some interesting results with this tool, but for this particular edit, I'm not gonna use this one, but I do wanna just show you what you can do. Um, so for example, we could add some light customization, and this allows us to work with textured patterns. So currently we're on strips, but we can also have dots. We could work with a palm leaf pattern if we wanted. So let's say we wanted the stripes back, but with a palm leaf pattern helping to project that. And if we play with these sliders and get this to look the way we want it to, we could give this image the feel as if the light is um, filtering through these leaves here and hitting our model. So that's a really kind of cool and creative use for this tool. We could do something like that. And we can also mask it out. So for example, you can see on our hand here, it's making our hand very bright. So we could grab the mask, come into the brush and actually erase that from her hand. And that would just take it away and leave it on her hair. So let's do a quick before and after with that tool and you can see what that's doing. But I'm not gonna use that for this portrait, so we'll just close that down. So now let's move on to Portrait Bokeh AI. So that bokeh is the description of the blur effect that you get, the out of focus area of your photo. Now you can already see that I have a blur effect that's been created by my lens in camera. However, if you don't have that or you don't like it and you wanna make it more blurry, what we can do is just grab this amount slider and you can see that straight away the AI has found our model and it's created a very accurate mask, including all of the hair around our model. And now we're able to just grab the amount slider and crank that up as high as we like. So we're basically throwing everything out of focus behind her and leaving her perfectly intact in the foreground. We have the background amount here so we can actually work with the brightness behind her. So if we wanted to darken down the background and bring more attention to her, we can do that. We can make our highlights glow by bringing that slider up. We can change the warmth. So we could actually create a more complementary color scheme by pushing the background towards blue to complement the kind of orangey tones in her skin. Or we could actually harmonize with her skin tones by pushing the warmth so that the highlights are actually going to a more orange color. And if you're not happy with the mask around the edging, you also have an edge correction slider that can actually help to pull in that amount. When you close the tool down, it jumps into the edit section. So if you want to come in and make changes, you need to come back to that edit section, just like with any tool. And now if I want to, I can just reduce that amount quite heavily. I feel like that was way 
over the top. So in fact, again, I don't think I'm actually gonna use it for this portrait. I'm happier with it as it is with a natural camera bokeh in the background. But if you need to add that kind of blurred background, you can do that with that tool, which is great. Now, before we look at face AI, skin AI, etc., one thing I do want to do is sort out these hairs that we have here that as a photographer, I really should have got her to sweep that out of her face, but it was a bit of an impromptu photo shoot and I didn't really pay too much attention to that. So let's fix that up now. We need to either come to the professional section and clone this out, and that is a great way to do that. But alternatively, we could come into the essential section and use the erase tool here. So one thing you don't want to do is work with too big a erase tool, paint over this bit, and then hit erase and expect Neo to do a good job because the results aren't going to be great. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a mottled effect going on on our forehead here. That's not good. So I'm just gonna reset that tool and I'm gonna show you the correct way to do this. Because we're dealing with hair strands, we want to paint over the strands. And so the more accurate you can be with your mask that you're asking it to remove, the better the results are gonna be. So I can make my brush even smaller. And if you want to do straight lines, just click once, hold shift, and then click further down. So that's a great way to select hairs when you don't want to actually try and be really precise painting over them with your mouse. So I've selected quite a lot of the hairs there. Let's click arrays. Normally I would actually do um, one at a time or just a couple at a time and just hit arrays as I go rather than bulk editing like I did there. Because again, we've got that mottled effect going on there and I'm literally having to try and sort this out so in the name of speed for this tutorial, I've actually shot myself in the foot. Like I say, what you're better off doing is just small little areas over the hair like this. If I hit erase on that particular hair, it's gonna do a perfect job. Let me show you what I mean on this hair on her face. I've selected it, I'll click erase, and it's done a perfect job. We can even use the erase tool for the highlights. If we feel like they're just a little bit too um, bright on her nose, what we can do is actually paint over them, hit erase, and that should get filled with a skin tone. So there you go. Look, if we look at the before and the after, we've got rid of the hairs and that little highlight on her nose as well. We could even clean up the little bit of blood vessel in her eye there, hit erase, and that's gonna take care of that. Now, one of the problems with that tool, you would have noticed that it doesn't actually have a native mask because what would be quite nice is to reduce that effect in some places. So if you want to have a reduction of certain features on the skin without removing them completely, the way you'd want to do that is actually with the clone tool. So rather than having a strength so high at 100, what we can do is bring that down. Let's say we want to, I don't know, work with a 40% reduction of something on the skin. Now I'm not suggesting that you do reduce these things that I'm actually painting over here because they're part of the beauty of her skin but I leave that up to you. I'm just merely showing you what you can do. So for example, the freckle here, I can just paint over it once and it's just minimizing it. It's just taking skin from this area next to it where I'm clicking with the Alt key held down to sample from here and then I'm just painting over that. So it's just minimizing it. We can of course completely get rid of things, but I'm not wanting to do that here. Now I'm just gonna paint over this area of the forehead, again, just stealing from close by. So I'm just smoothing out that transition that we created rather badly before. And if you make a mistake, just press Control Z to undo it uh, because I went quite far over where I meant to there. So let's give that another go. Just coming in close to the edge of her hairline, but not right over it. So let's just do a toggle of the before and after, before and after. Now you can see some of the little blemishes on the skin. We haven't removed them, we've just minimized them. But as you can see, she's a great looking lady and we didn't need to do any of that. I'm merely showing you the technique that you can employ. Okay, if we toggle back to the original and release, you can see that we've done quite a bit of cleanup on the hair, those little blemishes we've minimized and I'm pretty happy with that and I'm ready to move on to the next step. So I'm just in the tool section, gonna close down the professional tab close down the Essentials tab, we are just gonna jump back into Portrait and carry on working our way through the tools here. So next we have Face AI. Now this has got a couple of really cool features in it. 
face light is a really great way just to brighten up the face. If we don't have enough exposure, enough brightness or light in the face, just grabbing that slider and bringing it up can help just to bring attention to the model's face. Now, you don't need to go all the way and go crazy with this. Just like so many tools, subtlety is the key. A little goes a long way. So if I toggle the before and after, it's just a subtle lift in brightness and I'm happy with that. Now this next slider, in my opinion, is one that you should avoid. This is the slim slider. So it's actually gonna narrow down the face. The AI is gonna throw a virtual grid over your model and shrink the face down. You don't see that grid, but you do see the results with the before and after. Personally, I don't really like to change the geometry of someone's face. They are who they are. And so in that case, I'm gonna leave slim face alone. And I'd probably recommend that you do the same as well. Now we have the eyes section. This is really great. We have original eyes, but if you wanna go a bit crazy, you can do things like change the color of the eyes. Now again, this is something that I don't personally recommend doing. I prefer to work with the original eyes and enhance those. But thankfully, there are ways to do that enhancement. So we can work with what they call iris flare. And if I boost that up, Basically, it's akin to putting a bounce light, a reflector underneath your model and just getting that little bounce light picking up in the bottom of the iris. Um, again, a little goes a long way. I think just a small amount of this can actually just help to enhance those eyes. So let's go somewhere around 21. Enlarge eyes, again, is one of those geometry changing features, which I don't recommend doing. You know, we don't need to make our model look like something out of a manga cartoon. So I'm gonna bring that back down. However, I do have a quick tip for you, which is if your model has one eye that is slightly bigger than the other, what you can do is create an independent instance of this tool, enlarge the eyes, both of them, and then you just mask in the eye that you want to be bigger, leaving the other side like the original. So you can actually balance the eyes out using the tool that way. Eye whitening will obviously brighten up the whites of the eyes. Again, it's one of those tools that you don't wanna to go too heavy handed with it, but a little can go a long way. Let's set that somewhere around that 22. And the eye enhancer, I really like this actually. It's actually enhancing the eyes that are already there. Again, way too much at 100, but just so you guys can see what's going on before and after. So now you see what it's doing. Let's drop it down and I don't know, again, let's go somewhere around that sort of like late 20s before and after. Red eye removal is something I hope you would not have to use. Red eye is caused by flash bouncing off the back of the eyes and bouncing back out. It looks awful, um, but you only get it if you're using flash and hopefully you're not firing a flash directly at your model. So hopefully that's one you're not having to use. Dark circle removal, let's push that up. Let's suppose she's been up late at night chatting away to someone and she's got darker circles under her eyes than she might normally have. Well, we can use this slider to actually add a bit of brightness under the eyes, which helps to minimize that. I think our model looks lovely and fresh, so we are just gonna leave that. And the, this slider makes me laugh, improve eyebrows. So let's push that all the way to 100. <sighs> Whether or not it's improving the eyebrows, I really think that's a matter of opinion. I don't think personally making a little, couple of little slugs above your eyes is an improvement. Personally, I prefer them as they are, but you guys can see that that's an option as is working with the lips where we can saturate the lips, we can increase the redness, we can darken the lips, and if she was smiling, we could whiten her teeth as well. These sliders for the mouth are not something that I usually use, so I'm just gonna drop those back how they were. So now we've walked through those settings, let's toggle our before, and after for the face AI. So one of the great things with this tool, as with so much of Luminar Neo, it's driven by AI. So the fact that it's finding where the eyes are, the lips, all of that allows you to set this as a preset. If you decide that you just like to tickle in a little bit of the eye enhancement, a little bit of eye whitening, and you know that you want to apply that to all of your portraits, you can set that up as a preset and the AI will take care of applying it with that judicious amount that you've selected to all of your portraits. So that's a really great thing. Now, if for some reason you don't own Luminar Neo yet, now is a great time to look at getting it because they're running a summer sale for two weeks from when I release this video, where you can actually save up to 82% off either the subscription or the perpetual license. 
Either way, 82% saving, but they've also given me a 20% discount code to share with my audience so you can actually save that in addition to what you're already saving. So if your subscription is up for renewal or you just want to get it for the first time, whatever, check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But for now, let's look at the next tool in portrait editing. So we'll close the face AI and this time open up skin AI. And this is all about helping to smooth the skin of your subject. So I'm just gonna grab the amount slider and start pushing that all the way to 100. So let's toggle our before and after, before and after. I don't know how well you can see that. So let's zoom in, let's come into 200%, toggle the before, and the after. Look at that cleanup job it's doing on the skin. Large and small blemishes are all being taken care of. Now, of course, you don't need to apply that with 100%. You can come down with a much more refined approach. Somewhere around 50 might do it before and after. You might be happy with that, or you may wanna go all in with this. It's entirely up to you. But just be warned, if you push it too far, the skin can start to look a little bit fake. So one thing that I like to do is actually work with the amount all the way to 100 and then come in and use the mask and you can actually just brush this in with a lower strength. So for example, I could come in and start painting it over the forehead and we're currently at 34%. I might wanna put a little bit over the cheeks and the nose and down here on the chin, let's say. And you could say you're happy with that before and after, but the thing is, that's no different to just setting that up with 34% initially. The benefit of using the mask is that you can vary the amount you apply it with. So let's come back in, let's go to 200%, and let's say we wanna put more of it over this area here, maybe where the shine is. So we can actually apply more of that effect just over there and here. And you can look for areas of the skin where you're not completely happy with the texture and just apply the effect a little bit more heavy handed. And as I zoom in here, I realize just how shockingly soft this photo is. And I really might need to look at getting a new camera and a new lens. But anyway, below skin AI, we also have body AI, which is all about sculpting the shape of the body. Personally, again, I don't like to do that, but you can do it if you want. You can increase or decrease the shape of the body. We also have high key here, which is, I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit out of place inside the portrait section. Yes, high key is often an effect that is applied to portraits, but you can also use it for landscapes as well. So I feel high key would be better suited just sat in the creative tab here, but just so you know, that's where it is. So let's apply a little bit of it just for the sake of throwing it on there. So now let's have a look at our before and our after, before and after. But before we call this portrait done, we really need to sort out the color tinge that's going on in her hair here. So let me show you how we do that. I'm gonna jump into the essential section here because we're gonna be working with color and I'm gonna open up the HSL section. So that is the hue, saturation and luminance. And it's the hue, the actual color itself that we need to address only in the hair. But currently we are gonna be looking at this on a global basis. So if I grab the yellow slider, which represents her hair and the green in her hair, and I start moving that over and the green, obviously we're affecting the whole photo. That is not what we want to do. So that's where our masking comes in. So what we're gonna do is first of all, try and get the hair looking like we kind of want it. If I toggle the before, you can see the green cast in the hair and release and now we've kind of neutralized it. The hair may be a little oversaturated, so that's where we can come into the saturation section and just make sure the yellow saturation, even the green saturation is reduced slightly, so before and after, and now we just want to apply that to the hair. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's another really great masking tool that is new to Luminar Neo, and that is the object selection. So I'm just going to click that. The AI is going to do a quick calculation and then now I can come in and add sections. So I'm gonna add her as a whole. It's currently not letting me select the hair only, but what I can now do is come to the subtract section and I'm gonna take away the face and any other area that isn't hair. So we can take away her hand here. Okay, that was a mistake. I clicked on her hair on the left-hand side and it removed all of the hair. So if that happens, let's go again. Let's just click over her. We're gonna go subtract do the face, 
t-shirt arm and I won't click this side of the hair. Let's just have a quick look where we're at at the moment. So as you can see, we've neutralized the hair. We've got rid of that green tinge, but it is affecting over this side slightly as well. So this time I'm just gonna come into the brush and erase from this side. I don't need to do it with 100%. I just need to minimize it, not get rid of it completely. Something like that. Here's our before, here's our after. Before and after, her hair is back to the color it should be. Now I know this is a portrait editing video, but I wanna stress the importance of creative problem solving, no matter what photo you're editing. So in this one, we've had to solve the problem of the green tint in her hair, but there was also that little dangly thing in the corner <laughs> that I wanna get rid of as well. So it's always good to have tools in your arsenal for solving those kind of problems. So in this one, you know, several ways I could solve this problem. We could use that Bokeh AI tool to blur the background, that is one option. But there's also another dedicated blur tool that has a mask built into it. So that's gonna allow us to specify that exact point that we want blurred. So let's see if we can sort that out. So we're gonna close down the color tab and jump into the creative section here. And you can see the tool second from the bottom is blur. Now we've got a whole host of different blur options. But for this one, I'm gonna use the Tilt Shift Blur. So let's just start grabbing the amount slider and let's push that all the way to 100 so it's clear to see what's going on. Now, this is kind of interesting. You know, wouldn't leave it like this, but the fact that her eyes are nice and sharp and top and bottom is blurry, that's kind of cool. If we click the Blur Center, we can actually see and manipulate where that blur cuts through. So you can see this is why her eyes were nice and sharp because in the middle here, that says do not blur this section. So what if we put that on the same tilt as her eyes and now bring this out so that her face is also not blurred at all or maybe we could start the blur, let's say just around there. So it's just starting to kick in and then we're gonna bring the outer point that says 100% of blur outside of this area. Let's start to bring that out. So now we have a blur transition of 0% through the middle where her face is and on that same axis running through there. And then we have a zero through to 100% transition here with 100% of the blur falling outside of these lines. So now we've got it set up the way we want, we can come in and fine tune the amount. So we can bring that all the way back down to zero. So we see our original photo and then we can just start easing that in until we're happy with the look. But what we can do here is say it's this little funny dangly doodacky that I want to get rid of. So we're gonna just go until the point where that's completely gone, but I'm not happy with what it's doing to our model here, that's too much. And the great thing with this tool is, like so many of the tools in Neo, we have the option for masking. So I could use object selection, or I could use AI just to select her and remove it, but what I'd prefer to do is keep some of this effect. So I'm gonna use the erase tool with a low strength, use the bracket keys on my keyboard just to increase the size of the brush. And now I can actually just start taking that away by painting it away and then leaving a little bit of it on her shoulders so it's starting to wrap that blur around her. So here's our before, here's our after, before and after. So now with a few of Luminar Neo's portrait tools applied, let's have a look at our before and after right from the start. Here's our original raw file and here's our after, before and after, before and after. Now, if you like portrait editing, you are gonna love this little bit of inside information. Skylum, the guys behind Luminar Neo, are currently working on a secret project, Project Barcelona, it's titled, the name is gonna change, but it's all about editing our portraits using their AI technology, very much geared specifically to getting the most out of portraits. So I'm very excited to find out more about that. And as soon as I do, when I have the beta, I'm gonna share it with you guys. So if you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd strongly recommend subscribing and hitting the bell notification so that when I drop that video, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.